people welcome you to Business Nigeria today, Monday. I am Tolu Lokpe Ogunjobi. President Mohamed Buhari's trip to Morocco has begun yielding results with the three signings of, of, of the signing of three agreements between Nigeria and Rabat. The agreements include that of a regional gas pipeline that would see Nigeria provide gas to countries in the West African sub-region that extends to Morocco and Europe. And the meeting between President Buhari and King of Morocco, Mohammed VI, uh, focused on strengthening economic relations in gas resource development, global investments, and agricultural training and management. The Nigerian Morocco gas pipeline will reduce gas flaring in Nigeria and cut down poverty uh, through the creation of more job opportunities. Nigeria also signed a memorandum of understanding for the development of a chemical plant for producing ammonia and its derivatives as well as a cooperation ag agreement on vocational training and technical supervision. The Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority, NSIA, says it will continue to diversify assets to drive returns and mitigate uh, market volatility. The agency is focused on more basic facilities investments this year as it deploys the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund. Dara Folayo has that report. The Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority's financial performance for 2017 shows total comprehensive income dropped to 27.9 billion naira. Fundamental components of income rose as interest and investment income grew. Net operating income dipped owing to government's currency management policies. A slowdown in reinvestment of matured funds and rapid deployment of monies into infrastructure made higher operational expenses impact on performance. Late 2016 into early 2017, the NSI created a wholly owned SPD called NAIC MPK, NAIC MPK. This is a wholly owned NSI subsidiary. The idea of NAIC MPK is to import is to uh, supply the raw materials needed to make fertilizer to blending plants. We had planned for this business to make 5% profit, but it actually was challenged by all the logistics issues. The conversations we're having are around all kinds of risk mitigation structure to ensure that we play the catalytic role of not only investing, but also bringing third-party investors into some of these roads. The global market should remain volatile this year. But the NSIA says it is prepared for this. It has restructured its allocation strategy with an increased focus on domestic infrastructure. The Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund shall drive its investment strategy going forward as 50% of future contributions will fund infrastructure. $650 million has been voted to the NSIA to enable it to drive the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund. With this, excluding returns we have made, it means now that the core capital injected into the NSIA by the government is now $2.15 billion. And the expectation is that we will see more injection into the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund over the next 12 months. The NSIA is responsible for building a savings base for Nigerians, provide stabilization support when there is economic stress, and develop infrastructure. The agency says 50% of its capital has been deployed across strategic asset classes of its future generation not, fund. Um, its stabilization fund remains fully invested. Lara Folayo, TVC News, Abuja. Well, I have with me in the studio Chief Economist with Pricewaterhouse Coopers, Andrew Nevins. Well, many thanks for your time joining us at this time. But before we continue our discussion, let's bring, let me bring you uh, up to speed with some analysis that has happened between uh, some months and now. We begin with inflation rate, where the FSDH Merchant Bank has projected that inflation rate is to drop to 11.5%. That's for the month of May. We are still expecting these figures from the National Bureau of Statistics. And this drop in inflation rate is expected as a result of uh, the base effect on the, in the composite, uh, that's consumer price index from the previous year. The consumer price index rate has remained on the decline for 14 consecutive times. Andrew, what do you think of this figure, uh, this projection? 
Well, I think it's, a, it's an improvement. I think it's probably pretty accurate. Uh, but it was to be expected because, of course, we, got the we imported the inflation when oil price dropped and then our currency dropped. Our currency has been stable for the last period. Oil prices are actually back up. So we should expect this to continue to keep dropping. And as the CBN governor said, maybe we'll get to single digits. Soon. That was what I wanted to ask you. Single digits. When do you see us getting to single digits? Possible uh, this year? You know, the one thing about economists, they make projections that are all, almost always wrong. But at the rate that we're going down, we could see in the fall in single digits. Uh -huh. but, but we should expect it, as I said, if oil price goes up. But of course, if oil price drops back down and when our exchange rate comes under pressure, then this will come under pressure too. Oh, de de definitely. Even as we move into an election, yeah, people think maybe there could be a shift from governance to politicking. I, I don't know if you think about that. Well, I think we've said before, one of the big problems as we move into the election cycle is that all the focus on things like ease of doing business and structural improvements gets washed away by the uh, electoral cycle. And of course, then you have also the additional spending of the electoral cycle. So if we have more cash in the economy and we don't have more output, we're going to have inflation come back. That's really a, a, a very worrisome one. Well, okay, now to the other thing now is the, on the exports front. The Nigerian Bureau of Statistics says the country is export increased by 20.02%. That's for the first quarter of 2018. The export value in the quarter on the review was 4.69 trillion naira compared to the quarter 4 2017 figure of 3.9 trillion naira. Uh, in the in contrast to the first quarter of 2017, the country's export increased by 56.01%. That's another plus. What's your take on the, the, the positives from the export side? Well, it is a plus, but the reason it's up 20% is because our oil prices are up. And of course, we've had some increase in agricultural export, but it's off a very small base. So this is because oil price is up. So you know, the lesson for us is, Oil is not going to stay up forever, so we need to make sure we invest these proceeds wisely, uh, wisely in the country and not waste them like the last time oil was at $100. And that, that takes us to the issue of diversification then. How far have we really gone? The Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, beautiful documents, beautiful projections, but implementation remains one thing that we, 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 we wait to see. I don't know what are your thoughts with that. Well, I think on the positive side, I think there are a lot of people in this country, in the private and the public sector, that understand it, that are behind it. Obviously, pa Pebek, Dr. Jamoke, the Minister uh, Amela, uh, Minister of Finance, and lots of people are pushing for this, the Governor of Lagos. But we still have the structural constraints. We know so many business people that want to do projects. And they're putting in big energy into it. Small scale, new uh, high tech sort of startups or big scale, big capital investment. And they're all struggling to kind of get over the hurdles, the logistical hurdles, the infrastructure hurdles, the financing hurdles. So the energy out there is incredible, but we haven't quite unleashed it. And we're still sitting here at 2% growth. That's it, that growth. When do we get, the growth has been fragile. Analysts like you have come out to always say that the growth we have is fragile. When do we have this growth that will really trickle down? I know, yes, we didn't get to this point in a day, but how soon will Nigerians start getting food on their table as they want it? Well, I think our message is this better be an urgent issue in Abuja and every state capital because the IMF came out two weeks ago and said, in fact, we're going to have low growth all the way to 2022. Mm -hmm. What they said was GDP per capita was going to decline all the way to 2022. It started declining in 2015. So 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. 2022, we are getting poor every year. And I don't think the, the country can survive that. Uh, so I think the urgency has to be there. How do we, we're very, you know, how do we unlock it so we're growing six, seven percent, unemployment's coming down, poverty is coming down, and we just have a few structural things that we need to, to take on. So a simple one, I mean, the Emir of Cano came out the other day and again raised this issue of the uh, fuel price subsidy. So of course, when the oil price was low, it wasn't much of an issue. Oil prices come back up. We subsidized to keep it at 145. But all the studies show that that subsidy benefits either the rich or what happens is the fuel gets diverted into other countries like Cameroon. And of course, when the oil price was high before, Cameroon shut the refinery down because they were taking Nigerian. Yeah. So we spend, we spend a trillion naira, at least this, so far this year, subsidizing. What could we do with that tr trillion naira if we put it into infrastructure, if we put it into education, if we put it into basic health care? Mm. So those are some of the structural things that we just haven't addressed and are holding us back from hitting this 6, 7, 8% growth that we need.
six percent, seven percent growth, that will really, really be impactful if we could well, get. So, but you know, we say it would be impactful, but China grew at ten percent for several decades, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we actually probably could grow nine or ten percent if we had every state firing at all cylinders. They had the capacity to do the things they needed to do locally on that. Six, seven percent is the minimum we need to, to reduce unemployment and poverty. It's not the maximum. Mm -hmm. So we can even do better. Now, now you talked talk of IMF and lots of um, suggestions have always come from IMF, World Bank. But some analysts come to say, well, some of these things look like a tall order. And we might not even be able to achieve some of them. Well, well what do you make of some of these projections by this award, these international highly reputed bodies, what do you really think about some of them? Are, are they really, can we say they are 100% perfect? Because some can say, Please, let's ignore them and just face reality. Look at when Moody's and all of that left Nigeria and some were saying, well, we don't care. We'll stabilize our economy. What do you think about these international bodies interfering into some of our financial, our dealings? Well, I think there's a long history of looking at what the IMF has, has uh, mm -hmm. recommended and not necessarily beneficial to the country. So I don't want to focus on what the IMF is saying. I mean, we're also worried about, it was PwC Nigeria worried about declining incomes that we've seen there. So if we don't get the growth up, you know, we're going to have this, this problem. So we shouldn't be here doing what the IMF says exactly. But what we do know that we have to have more investment. Yeah. We have to have more growth. Uh, we've been you know, particularly focused at PwC on some of these constraints. We've been talking a lot about the real estate sector, for example. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the last GDP numbers, I mean, it wasn't very good. Some sectors did okay. Agriculture did okay. Obviously, oil and gas because the price was up. Real estate went down by 10%. And we've said, if real estate doesn't work, the rest of the economy can't compensate because it's the biggest sector. So why aren't we focused on what are the barriers to real estate? So the land registry, the production of raw materials requiring power, some of the infrastructure issues so people can get to the houses. We have a demand for 17 million housing units and we can't produce anywhere near enough houses that are required. Why not? Okay, now let's go to the foreign exchange market. Now, the Naira at the moment loses about 0.28%. That's against the United States dollar in the Paro market. Well, total turnover in the Iron E, that's investors and exporters window, dipped further by 28.92%. Well, at the Interbank money market, overnight lending rate expanded 25 basis points to 3.58%. In, in a general view, we've had a little bit of stability when it comes to Forex, over in between 360 and 365, that's the parallel market. What's responsible for this stability? Yes, I know CBN intervention is part of it, but what again do you think is responsible? Well, I think what's happened here is, is actually we run a current account surplus at not a very high oil price, I think maybe $45. So once it got up about $45, we are running a current account surplus. Uh, we had some dollars, and the CBN took the decision that in the private market, so the, the parallel market, uh, the NIFEX, we're going to be at 360 and they've managed it to 360 because of course if you if you having a current account surplus you've got the dollars to manage it uh, and they've done it so they've prevented it in a nor in a, if it was a fully uh, liberal market it actually would have appreciated so it's 360 350 340 330 Instead, the CBN said, we don't want to happen. We'll keep it at 360. That will suppress imports, because if we import too much, it can create problems. But it also means we accumulate reserves. So we've seen this uh, doubling of reserves. I think the low point was about 24 billion. Now we're almost at 50 billion. And the CBN's essentially saying, we want to have enough firepower that when the oil price goes down, we're not going to go through what we went through in 2015 or 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's been a very clear policy. It doesn't st no, nothing stays that even for so long unless you have have some kind of intervention which the CBN has been doing in the in the parallel market. So that's, that's been on the positive side for us, that's the intervention by the central bank. Of well I think, I think what we've really accomplished is by having almost 50 billion dollars in reserves, in reserves right? we can really feel pretty comfortable that uh, if, if when oil price drops again, I won't say if, when oil price drops again we've got a buffer to manage manage through it. So. The, 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 before we leave this, uh, the, this topic as for talking forex, uh, the disparity also between the parallel market and the bank, that's the interbank rates, has also been something that has uh, called, you know, lots of concerns. People have been talking about that disparity when it comes to rates. Can we ever have a steady rate in Nigeria? Can we have it in a, in a short while? 
Well, I mean, PwC has been quite vocal to say we would like to see a harmonized rate. Others have said harmonized rate. I mean, we're coming into, however, political election cycle. It's hard to make major policy decisions mm -hmm. uh, at that point. I think after the next election, we can see whether we can bring the rates together. I mean, the, there's been a massive improvement with the, the parallel NYFEX market uh, in terms of importers, uh, investors into the country. So no question improvement. Um, but if we want to have a strong Naira, we, people need to want the Naira. And there's confusion when you have a parallel rate. So if after the election we can harmonize the rates and have a, an open Naira. I mean, we, we have lots of people in the world who want to send dollars here to the diaspora. We have our oil proceeds. We're increasing our agricultural production. The Dangote refinery uh, and modular refineries are coming on stream. We're producing more rice, which reduces our need for dollars. So all of those things could come together after the election to say, you know what, we don't need to maintain two rates. We can go with a single rate. And then, then sorry, sorry, totally. Then I would be worried about uh, the problem is the and Naira rising. People have worried for the last five years, six years, the Naira depreciating. But if we have all those things, then of course there's you know lots of dollars uh, and not so much imports. You may actually have the Naira rise too fast. Okay, before we go down, the Federal Executive Council also approved two executive orders and five amendment bills to the country's tax policies are aimed at reducing tax burden on Nigerians and boosting ease of doing business. They approved the executive orders of Value Added Tax Act and review of goods liable to excise duties, while the five amendment bills included the company's income tax, value added tax, custom excise tariffs and personal income tax. Also a part of government's effort at boosting its revenue, the Voluntary Assets and Income Declaration Scheme was introduced. Reports from the Federal Indian Revenue Service says it has raked in nearly 30 billion through VADES uh, from both individual and corporate bodies. VADES, what do you think of this initiative? Well, I, we've, always, we've been very supportive of it. I mean, we've been talking about the need to increase the tax take. We're only at 16%. We need to get to 15% 15 of GDP as rapidly as possible to finance infrastructure, education, health care. Uh, and too many people were getting competitive advantage by not paying their taxes. So we've been very in favor of uh, uh, the scheme. Um, I guess the question is whether the government's prepared to follow through because they did one extension, which was probably to be expected. Now it's coming to an end. Are they actually going to go after the people who, who decided not to come forward. And going forward, we just need the compliance because the big problem is if you're complying but your competitor's not, it's difficult to stay into business. You may want to pay your taxes, uh, but if everyone around you is not, is, not, is not doing so, it's not a tenable situation. So if we can use this to get the compliance rate up. But there's a lot of technology help here. Obviously, the, um, the uh, bank, banking verification number is hugely important uh, on that. The, the tax authorities are collecting data in a way that gets more and more connected so it's going to be harder and harder for people to evade their taxes so we're optimistic but again it's urgent that we get that six percent up to fifteen percent because we need that money to do other things in the economy and of course we have highly skewed income and wealth distribution so most of the tax will come from the rich but most of what we need to spend on roads, basic infrastructure, health care, and um, uh, education is going to benefit the, the bottom of the pyramid. And we need that transfer to happen. That benefit is what Nigerians really want, and they will pay if they get the benefits too. You know, that's very important. Andrew Nevin, Chief Economist, Price with the House Coopers. I must thank you very much for joining us on Business Nigeria today. You're very welcome. Thank you, Tolo.